We'll start with some calculator question here. So make sure you will have your calculator with you. I'm using Casio, the latest model, but then if you are using some other model, that's fine too. Um, GCG20 should work the same. And yeah, let's get started. So this is question talking about the mean weight of those, and then we need we need the information here. AD is correlation. You should calculate and do the work. So ah, and what I'm going to show you is just one of the method. It's not all the method. So there are better way than leave a comment. So first of all, um, we need those. We use our calculator. We get to, into it. So this will be list one and list two. Ah, first of all, yeah, statistics. There we go to. And then we give in the data there. So bear with me, I need. All right, and then the other list will be the kg here. So 10, all right, check through the numbers, looks all right. Then we go to calculate. So after you get to calculate, before you get to anything, let's go to set. All right, we are doing x and y here, two variables. List one is our h, x, and list y, this list two is our y. All right, so everything's got great. Uh, one variable is finding mean mode median, so we are going for regression, and they want ax plus b, so it's x, ax plus b. That gives you all the values. So remember, correct to three significant figures with our paper, A, B, and C. So you just copy the number with three significant figures we'll do. So A1 is, so it will get 1.90 for A, and B you will get 1.90. And B, you will get 8.07 for B. And then, that is our A and B. All right. The correlation coefficient, remember, is the correlation coefficient is not the R square value, it's the R value. So we got that. It's 0 0.984. Nice and easy. So then we go, we got through those, and then we move on to the, and estimate this question. All right. I am lazy, so I will just copy and then get it to... Press enter, then we get to our first equation. So now we go to graph, which I got some other things previously, so I delete them. Now get back to here. It's not selected, so when you got you got nothing to see. So make sure you select it, and then there we go with our equation. The edit might not be the limit, the window may not be right. So double check on that if you need to. So it's one point two x equals to 1.295. So our G soft Y care when X equals 1.95. And there's the answer, 11.7 or 11.8 kg. And there we go, we got the answer. Okay, moving on. Our next question here is a trick question. No, trigonometry question. We probably need sine root or sine root. So we need to find BD. BD is here. So I got this opposite and I got this angle here. So definitely I will use sine root. So sine, no, I leave the unknown on top. Then it will be, make things easier. So I have BB over sine 59 degree equals to 11 over sine 100. So DB equals to 11 sine 59 degree over sine 100. Now we get our calculator. Remember, manual calculation. Make sure you double check on it. This is radian here. This is degree wrong. So what I'm going to do is shift manual, change the angle to degree first. All right, so now I would could type in the equation. Our calculator do a pretty good job. 11 sine 59 over sine 100. Long. All right, so we got the 9.57 cm, uh, unit cm, cm. All right, just in case, I'll leave the number here because I might need it later, which I do. Now we can see these. So we got this angle, this side, and the angle. So it's include the angle, I'll use cosine root. Um, instead of just using those, I will use the original value or at least copy a few answers from them. 
So anyway, I will have my DC will be equal to square root DB squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times DB times 6 cosine 682 degree. All right, and then I'll calculate My answer is CSO square root. Answer square plus 6 square minus 2 times answer, which is our DB times 6 cosine 82. Remember the square root, a lot of students always forgot about that. And now is our answer, 10.6 cm. Yep, another six point. Coming up, our another question. So we want to solve this graph, right? So x-intercept means that y is equal to zero. So we have sine e x equals to zero. Remember, it's a calculator paper, so I use GDC to do it. So I'll sketch the graph, nice and easy. So I have sine bracket e to the power x bracket. All right, make sure because it's a graph, the limit is here, so it's in radian. Change it back to radian. Make sure you do so. Like keep changing it around and around, unless you've got two GDC. Make sure they are in different model. So from zero to one point five, I fix the window. All right, and this should be five. Doesn't have to be that big. Now I've got my lovely graph here and I just have to g-solve the root. Alright, so x equals to 1.14, but I will write it down 1.1447298. I'll write a few digits more just in case I need it later, which I do. Then I need to find the area of the region of those. So the formula is limit 1.14. 4, 7, 2, say something like this, uh, 3 then maybe. And then the other is 0, f square because it's rotation, so I need pi as well. Uh, oh. Let's write nicely. So bracket sine e x square b x. And remember, three points, we do not give them too much effort. Calculator. But this time it's not area, so we need to go back to the normal calculating thing. So option, cal, integral. Definite integral, the calculator could do it for you, which is actually allowed and legal. So sine, sine bracket, e to the power x, close bracket, yeah. I need one more closing because I need to square that. Missing one zero, and this is 1.14. 472. Alright, so I miss out a bracket here, so I need to get back there. Yeah, so it's a square. Oops, times pi. So this is our answer 2.50. Don't give them too much effort because it's a calculator paper. Here's another question here. This is about sequence. Uh, geometric sequence, infinite sum. So the first term of an infinite infinite sequence, like u1, is 4, and s infinite is 4, is 200, which is equals to u1 over 1 minus r. Our u1 is 4, so 200 equals to 4 over 1 minus r. So 200, no, divide both sides by 5. So I got 50 equals to 1 over 1 minus r. So which is 1 over 50 equals to 1 minus r. r equals to 49 over 50. Don't even need calculator, but if you want to, you can. So next one, B. Find the sum first eight sum. So we will have 4 times 1 minus 49 over 50 to the power 8 over 1 minus 49 over 50. This one I use calculator. So get it there. Square root uh, fraction. So I got 29.8 as the answer. And what is the least value of it? So I need to have 169, I'll make it equals first. 4, 1 minus 
49 over 50 and over 1 over 50 to save time. And as you throw it over, I do a little bit of the mass, or you can get the calculator. Yes, I'll use the calculator for it. So I will graph this function. I should have a very big number, so I need whatever. There is a blue line there. I don't bother to see it. Uh, actually, no, let's do it. Why is 100 on 165 only? So all I need is 200. Don't be too harsh. Now I see a line. So G soft, I want 186. So X care when Y equals to 136. Uh, well, sorry, 163. Yep, and then give me uh, 83 point something. So N will be equals to 83 point something, something, something. Therefore, the N we need have to be 8T4. Alright, this is a question I really like. So the coefficient of x3, x2, how x cubed is the same as x5. That's not that's a very odd there, but then it happens. It's the question say it, so I'll do it. And because there is x and x on the both sides, so we need to find out r. So I will ignore all that coefficient. I will have x r times 1 over x9 minus r should be equal to x3. So we have x to the power r plus r minus 9 equals to x to the power 3. So 2r equals to 3 plus 9, r equals to e. Yeah, so r equals 12, r equals to 6 for the first one. And the other one, we do the same thing. So we have x r plus r minus 9 equals to x to the power 5. So 2r equals to 14, r equals to 7. Now the two coefficient is the same. We care about the coefficient only. So we have first, 6 first. 3, 6, no, 9, 6. <laughs> 9, 6, all right, 2 to the power 6 times k to the power 3. Mm equals to 9, 7, 2 to the power 7 times k squared. So rearranging it a bit. So let's go back to here. NCR is the NCR option. Probability. So 9C6. 84 times 2 to the power 6. All right, so we have... 5376k cubed equals to, do the same thing, 9c7 times 2 to the power 5. 1, oh, sorry, to the power 7. Oh, I like this calculator, I can fix it. So I have that one here. It's 4608k squared. Um, usually I cancel it, because, but then I'll do the right thing. So 37. 6k cubed minus 4608k squared equals to 0. k squared equals to times 5376k minus 4608 equals to 0. So k equals to 0, rejected, or k equals to 4608 divided by 536. Five three seven six. Sorry, that's why it looks weird. Five three seven six. Then I use a calculator again. Ah, yeah. All right, six over seven. I'm too lazy to find the three six fix, so six over seven is good enough. 
This is the fairy wheel I like so much because it's always get the shoe hands. Yeah, it's a bit evil there, so let's go through this. Uh, the diameter is one, 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 and then rotating speed, constant speed, and this is K meter. So at the complete turn is 60 minutes, which is this means the period. So uh, I forgot to change my pencil. So now I got the eight minutes. So how 60 minutes should be from here down up to this bit, the top bit. So this is 117. So the K have to be 117 minus 111 equals to six. Nice and easy. So now after eight minutes, so it's going to be a cosine curve. So we go through those and then we have the height of it and then we get through it. So first of all, our usual A is the max minus the mean. So it's 11, 117 minus six divided by two. So usually, okay, let's leave it at it. So 117 minus, minus six divided by two. So it's 50, 55.5. However, be very careful. This, for this case, is going upwards. However, our cosine curve go downwards. So I have to really flip it 90 degrees, uh, flipped it on the x axis. So now that means that it become the a have to be negative. All right, and then, then now find the 30 meters of a at the third time. So I will now I will have our h x t equals 6.15 plus. Uh, negative, actually minus, minus 5.5, uh, 55.5, 55.5, cos pi over 8t, right, so now get back here, program and uh, graph, uh, if you want to delete it, if you don't want one, you can leave it and go to the next line, that's fine, 61.5 minus 5.5, 55.5 cos bracket pi over 8t. All right, double check because this is radian. If there's a pi there, this is a radian. I am happy. So I should get a curve. Oh, exciting. So double check, double check the V window. Do I need that much? Actually, I do not need that much. I need 32. So zero from 32. Now I have a happier curve. Now I need to find x scale when y equals to 3. 3, 30. And I want the third time. So I will have in 30, first, second, third. This is the answer. So just to show you my step, I will write it down as if I really solve it. 2.46. 13.5 and then the next one is 18.5 therefore the third time is 18.5 by counting and that's how we do it all right so first of all this is another function question and then we move on so vertical asymptote equals to c so this bit equals to zero when x equals to three so i have three c plus 6 equal to 0. It's not hard. 3c equals to negative 6, c equals negative 2. And now I have my function fx equals to 8x minus 5 over negative 2x plus 6. Now our trick is the coefficient of x, we may just multiply, we'll just divide it, simplify it. So the asymptote should be y equals to negative 4. Remember the question is asking the equation. So make sure you give it a e equation, not just equals to 4 or something. Student always do this. Now this is not an equation of the asymptote. Alright, now let's, like, x, y equals to k, so it means a vertical line, and then we need to flip through it. So originally our curve should be somewhat like So we have our x asymptote and y asymptote here. So it's going through like this. True. And now because it's flipped, the x-axis, so this is 
Do I go wrong? Yes, I got it wrong. It should be this side. So it going this side and this side. Excuse me. So now with a flip, so this will be here and this will flip up over here. Like this. Okay, this is gone. Which means that originally the y asymptote is here, become up here, and our new piece of stuff become here. Alright, that is the bit that you have to ask. It's just so ugly. Excuse me for that one. So this should be like this. So now, which means that the fourth asymptote is here, that is always got two answers except this point, because this one only originally based on this branch. However, the other two branch, even if flipped, it doesn't go here. So four have to be equals to k, k have to be equals to four, or k equals to zero because it's touch it once. All right, this is how we get through it. This is tricky here, but then you need to have a clear concept with that. All right, seeing that another time. So I show you option numeric absolute value of y1 the blue one is the original one the red one is the flipped one so this flip here but then the asymptote still from negative 4 become a positive 4 here so I need my ruler to make it clear all right so this bit at the 4 there's only see it once because originally there's only one 4 there one value of it but this round flippable flip it over doesn't get through those and that's how the tricky bit got all right, here we come to the long question. So we have P and Q two points. So P, Q, we want to factor because we always have the one after time minus the one before. So it's 7, 4, 9, minus, 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 3, 2, 5. That's how I do it. So I have 4, 2, 4. Nice and easy. And then the magnitude of it equals to square root 4 square plus 2 square plus 4 square. All right, we loved it, so and we love our calculator, so we use calculator for it. So square root sixteen plus four plus sixteen. Yep, and this is six, lovely number. Now there's another point P R there, so I have P Q and P R. Nice. I need this angle, so let's get to find it. So let's see. Um, P R. I'll. I'll I would like to write it, write it vertically, so I have 6, 1, 3. And then I would need to find the angle first, so to do this, I will dot product this to help me a bit on those. So now we have PR dot PQ, right? So yeah, PR is 4, so it's 6, negative 1, 3, dot 4, 2, 4. So it's too lazy. So I got 24 minus 2 uh, plus 12. 34, that's not a very lovely number. Anyway, so I got 34 over there. So at the angle should be cosine theta equals to 34 over 6 is the magnitude of PQ. Yeah, I don't need to square root. And then I might need to square root 6 square plus 1 square plus 3 square. So that gives me, um, for factors, gradient degree is radian degree is not a problem. So I personally like a, like a lot of you, I like degree a bit more. So I have shift cosine, 34 over 6 times square root, 36 plus 1 plus 9. Yep, I got 33.3 .3 degree. All right, if it's in radian, just in case if you love to use radian, press enter again or we have 0 0.58 to radian it's really your choice on how you do it now moving on we need we find the angle now we need to find the area of it so uh, because we got the angle here we got this two magnitude here 1 over 2 AB sine C so area would be equals to 1 over 2 square root uh, 36 39 uh, 36, 41, 6 square, A, B, sine, this answer. 
correct? So I will have it. Yes, I will have it. 46? No, I got something wrong. It's 46, sorry. Um, so I used the answer from here. So I use that 0 0.5 times root 46 times 6 sine angle. I got a ah, degree, sorry. So I got 11.2 is the area. All right, no one tell you what unit it is, so it's unit square. And then next one, find the shortest distance of it. Now, because I got the area and then So because I have the area, the shortest distance have to be a perpendicular line. Let me get back to the bit. So I want the shortest distance from R to PQ, so it's here. Yeah. So if I redraw this triangle, I will get a, I don't know what point it is. This is an X here. This is R. This is P. And this is the angle, 33.3 degree. Uh, PR is square root 46. Actually, you can use basic trigonometry black like that's, that's always a horrible way to find the shortest distance in vectors but this is a right angle triangle I can use Soka Toa so now based on this Soka Toa angle so I will have theta at the sine 33.3 degree equals to xr over square root 46 don't beat yourself up with those we don't like math that much so we have sine 33.3 degree equals to xr. Use our almighty calculator. I will move back up again because I need this answer. So I will have square root 46 sine angle. Now I've got 3.73 as the answer. All right, that finished our question eight which is how many points? 13 points. I'm so happy with that. Thank you. All right, so this is our long question here on kinematics. So initial means that t equals to zero, so which means this point. So now we just have to um, find it with the function here, key in with the graph, and then g of y intercept is y equals to seven, or yeah so or you can write down v0 equals to 7 that is the same too and then the maximum speed remember speed equals to the magnitude of v there's no direction there so all i need to do is i will do it here option numeric absolute y1 the blue is the original one the red is the absolute one so I need to change it to negative just in case right so this is our maximum speed so G soft maximum but then it's not it's the red one so this is the first one not this is not that high I want this maximum because the higher one so maximum of it is 6.37 and six point three eight actually, and then the other one is twenty four point seven. That is our maximum. Right now, the number of time is acceleration gets to zero. Acceleration gets to zero means that we have to differentiate it x uh, v, right? And then we want it to be zero, which means that we have to differentiate this bit and again we are too lazy with this so I do not need the red one so moving on I will have option calculus differentiation this time we will swipe one but not not an exact value for any value for it this is the only time you can work for the variables with the differentiation and then now blue is the original one green is the acceleration so I wanted to find it so you might want to sketch it there so just in case 
I got something like this one. Ah, sorry. Yeah, here and then go back up again. So one, two, three. You sketch it on a graph. That is your working there. So we do have three turning points, three maximum. Or you can actually by counting the turning point as well. That's really your choice. And then find the acceleration of P when they change the direction, which is when v equals to zero so when v equals to zero this is the time once and when v equals to zero t should be yeah i'm really using the calculator g soft i want the root of the blue one is t will be equal to 0 0.863851 something like that and then now put it back into a 0 0.863851 would be equals to uh, g soft y cal this is the green one this time i want it to be 0 0.063851 so it's negative 9.24 uh, 25 there we have a very powerful calculator and it's just two or three points at work so don't put it too much all right, now find the total distance travel by this. So what we need is like from seven to zero, and then distance is not displacement. So we need to magnitude it, the t. And for this type of hard work, calculator again, manual, matrix, and then option, calculus, integral. So we have seven cos x, minus 5x to the power cos x. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, uh, remember to uh, remember to magnitude it. Oh, I forgot to magnitude it. Sorry. So it's now we go to option again, numeric, absolute first, magnitude it, and then we have 7 cos x minus 5 x to the power cos x. Now we have 0 to t. It's doing the work, doing the work, why do that? Yes, and then remember you have magnitude, so it works for those. So that will be equals to 6.63.9 meters. Remember, when you're reading in the exam, do not write in this page. Write on the line paper, please, because this doesn't count any score. All right, so you might lost score for it anyway. I don't know whether we count it or not, but that's how we do it. We can see the picture here. All right, so this is our bit here, and then our last, nearly last question. Um, we need to go through those, and then we have the bit. So this is a statistic question. We have K here, and then, uh, so all of them should be at R equals to one. So K will be equal to one minus 0 0.89, then 98, minus 0 0.01 equals to 0 0.01 and then because of that we need to find I mean because these two are identical so we need to find that so we only have to have 93 plus 119 divided by 2 calculator so 93 plus 119 divided by 2 is 106 all right so when we need to find this and this is five points so we need to do a bit more so now we need to find it for probability of 93. Oh no, we need to do it one side. So we have probability of x of m smaller than of m smaller than 119 is equals to 0 0.99, yeah? So we do not have the mean, so we need to do something to find the mean and the standard d2. So, yeah, do we have the mean? Yeah, we have the mean, we need to send the d to find the next step. So what you need to do is like we use the z-score. So 119 minus the mean, 106 times the standard d, it should be equals to, now here we go, statistics. We don't need to care about those, we go to distribution. Ours is normal distribution, and we want to inverse. So 
Now we want it to be smaller, so it is the left. Make sure the data is variable, not the list, because you're using the list is wrong. So it's the left, and from the left onward, from left side onward, is 0 0.99. All right. We do not know either of them, so we will stick with the standard D1 and the mean 0. That gives you 2.36. Two point three two six three four seven eight seven. Exciting. So what we need to do is we throw it to the other side and we find it. So get back to that. We got one one nine minus one oh six. That should be thirteen equals to two point three two six three four seven eight seven. It's a bit annoying now. So we get through those. Calculator again. So we have thirteen divided by thirteen divided by 2.3263487 All right, and then we get our standard D, our mean, oh no, our standard D to be 5.58815. I will leave a bit more. Now with those, I would be able to find it. So now we have our bit, our M normally distributed with mean is 106 and the standard D is 5.5881 square. All right, because it's the mean and the variance. If you want to use the notation, make sure it's the mean and the notation. Now we need to find 95. So now we're going to do it. Manual, statistics, normal dis uh, distribution, normal distribution. Because it's smaller than 95, so we have to so the lower bit could be any number, relieve some stress, negative, nine, 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 very small number. And then the upper, we could accept is up to 95. This time we got our standard T, 5.58815, and then our mean is 106. Zoom, and then we got our answer, 0 0.245. Remember, three significant figures, we don't count the zero in front, we count the book. Let from start from here, so one, two, three. I know you know what, just let me say it. All right, moving on, we have six pa uh, apples in a bag, and then it's a tin. So we want the mass less than this, so we now become, with a sample, we need a certain bit of those. So we have our GDC again, this time it's a normal distribution. So, e e e e e. Now we have our y, which is a binomial distribution with 10 trial, and the probability is 0 0.0245. All right, probability, the, not the trial, the probability. I want to be at most one, so it's probability x smaller than one, which actually become probability of x equals to zero. True, because there's only one. We do not have at most, no, at most one is included, sorry. So we're going to use our GDC with it because they are so powerful. So this time we go back to distribution binomial and inclusive at most one. So from zero to one at 10 trial and sorry, and then the probability is 0 0.2, 0 0.024, and then our probability is 9.976, pretty high. All right, now moving on, we we'll find it. Now we contain 50 bags of apple, and then we take in a crate at most one apple. So it's a small apple. So now it's getting annoying with that. It's like we need to get through those, and then we have the bit of it. So we will have the. All right, getting into the expected value, the crate means 50 bags of it at most one. So it's the same way. So we have 50 times 0 0.976 to get the expected value of y here. So now we have 50. Get back to our manual, the normal calculation. 50 times 0 0.6 to 0.976. Now I've got 48.8. 
Last but not least, we want to probably at least 48 back and then we have at least one vote. So now become another probability here. So we have probability of a binomial distribution B with 50, 50 bags, sorry, sample and the probability 9.76. So this time we want the bags to be bigger than 48. Now we use our calculator again, manual, statistics, distribution, binomial. Um, this time we have figured up to 48. So we have up to 48 from 0 onwards, 50 bags, and then the probability is 0 0.876. And this is Sorry, I need to know. At least 48. Sorry, it's lower is 48. Upper is 50. Yeah, and that's our answer there. So at least 48. So careful with that. And then the probability should be 0 0.882 as request. And this is our answer.